Masami, Hitomi Sato, and Tomoko, Yuko Takeuchi, two teens, discuss a videotape that was allegedly made by a guy in Aizu and is said to contain a curse that will kill the viewer seven days after watching. Then Tomoko says she and three of her pals watched a strange tape a week ago and got a call after doing so. Masami understands that Tomoko was destined to die, which is unsettlingly similar to the fabled videotape. Then, while having some fun time together, a phone in their house rings suddenly. They are frightened that this phone call is from the same curse videotape that their pals watched earlier. They descend the stairs to investigate about the caller. They pick up the phone and realize that the call is from Tomoko's mother. Masami is horrified to witness Tomoko being slaughtered by an ominous force after a few scary moments. Asakawa Reiko, Nanako Matsushima, a reporter looking into the video curse's popularity among teens. She is informed by the teens that whoever watches that videotape late night on TV, receives a call after watching the video and the caller says to the viewer that you will die in one week. Another teen informs her that a high school student and her boyfriend died on a date in a similar strange way. While working in her office, Reiko tries to find the location of that high school in order to investigate further about the case. A few days later, Reiko learns that her niece Tomoko and her three other companions inexplicably perished at the same time, on the same night, with their mouths contorted in a rictus of horror. She also learns that Masami, the young woman who was with Tomoko when she died, lost her mind and is currently being treated for mental illness. While watching the CCTV footage of the high school couple, Reiko and one of her colleague discovered that the mouth of that girl was contorted in a rictus of horror, symbolizing that they witnessed some horror curse just before dying. Reiko learns that the four adolescents spent the previous week staying in a rental cabin in Aizu after discovering Tomoko's photos from that time period. She eventually switches to a picture of the teenagers with distorted and fuzzy faces. When Reiko returns to Aizu later, she asks the receptionist about the four people who stayed here on August 19. While investigating, she discovers an unlabeled recording in the lobby of the vacation rental house where the youngsters lodged. She inquires about the tape, but the receptionist has no idea about it and says that someone must have left it here. Reiko takes the recording and goes to the cabin. When Reiko watches the tape in cabin before, she notices that it contains a number of unsettling pictures that don't seem to be connected. She glances at a reflection of the cursed woman from the videotape in the TV, but when she turns back, the woman is not there. Reiko gets a call as soon as the tape is finished, realizing the infamous VHS curse. From this point forward, she thinks she has a week to live. Reiko asks Ruji Takayama, Hiroyuki Sanada, her ex-husband, for assistance on the first day. Reiko's face is blurred in the snapshot they take of her, further demonstrating that she was indeed cursed. After that, Ruji watches the video over Reiko's protests. After watching the video, they wait for the phone to ring as a usual process, but nothing happens. Reiko makes a copy for Ruji to study a day later. They discover a hidden message on the tape that warns that the Bukan will come for you if you keep doing Shuman. The message is written in an Aizu Oshima Island dialect. Asakawa takes her son to his grandpa's place. Later at night, she discovers that her son is watching the same videotape. After Asakawa's son watches the film, the two set sail for Oshima and learn about the legendary medium Shizuko Yamamura. A professor, Ikuma, brought Shizuko to Tokyo and did some experiments on her after which she went crazy and committed suicide. When they arrive at the hotel, they ask the man there about Shizuko and her daughter. He informs Ruji that Shizuko was a strange personality and used to sit here all day long. Ruji further realized that Sadako, Shizuko's missing daughter, must have created the videotape. Reiko now has just one day to spare. Later that evening, when Ruji is acquiring a boat to return to Aizu, Reiko rushes to him and informs him that the phone only rings at that cabin and that they must return to Aizu to find the solution. With the conviction that Sadako is dead and that the adolescents were slaughtered by her furious spirit, the two return to Aizu. They discover a well beneath the cabin before, which is covered with a lid on top of it. The group has a vision in which they learn that Sadako's father killed her and tossed her into the well. They remove the lid and Ruji descends the well to find Sadako's body. In an effort to placate Sadako's spirit, they try to empty the well while keeping in notice that Reiko's deadline will be met soon and she will be dead. When the time is almost finished, Reiko is no longer able to help Ruji in lifting the buckets full of water. Then, Ruji asks her to descend the well while he stays outside to lift the buckets. Eventually, Sadako's body is located by Reiko. She talks to her skeleton and hugs it in a caring manner. 
Ruji informs her that the deadline has passed and that now they are safe. They think the curse has been lifted when nothing bad occurs to her. The police arrives and the two are now returning back to their homes with relief. Everything appears to be alright until the following day, when Ruji is working at home. His television turns on by itself and displays an image of a well. He watches in horror as the phone rings suddenly and Sadako emerges from the well and Ruji's TV. Ruji is killed by the spirit of Sadako with his mouth contorted in the same rictus manner. Despite the fact that Sadako's body was found, Reiko is doubting that the curse was lifted. Reiko discovered what she accomplished that Ruji did not as she searched desperately for a remedy to rescue her son. He saw a copy of the tape that she had made. Reiko attempts to save her kid with a VCR and Ruji's copy of the tape after realizing that this is a never-ending cycle in which the tape must constantly be copied and passed on to keep the viewers alive. That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper Anxiety, filling up every space, no privacy And silently, it can build and build until you finally see Whoa, it's taking over, damn, no closure, moving closer No exposure, I just wanna be a loner So can't stay sober, looking over all their shoulders